Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the closing roundup of round eight of the National Horse Boarding Championships Got here at uh, Sandringham and obviously the wasps are affecting my um, co-presenter more obviously. than they're bothering me at the moment and I I'm hoping that I don't get stung in the process. So we're just going to go through the novice class. Um, and it's been a great, it's nice to see some new teams out there, really good. We're not going to go into too much detail, but in fifth place was the team of Embassy. Um, in fourth place, with a time of 54.45, was Chasing Tails. And of course that is uh, the team of Ash and Caitlin, uh, Caitlin yep. Uh, Junior in team. Junior team as well, 10 year old on the, on the horse and 14 on the board. Then we have in third place a new team, EFL Horseboarding, which actually stands for Environmentally Friendly, no, Environmental Forest Limited, Forestry Limited, Limited um, Horseboarding. And uh, they had 38.28. Okay. Uh, in second place, with the new horse this weekend that they've brought in, I thought went very well, um, an ex herdler, was 50 Shades of Bay with 34.59 seconds. And they only were in second. They were in second place by only 0 0.95 of a second. And first place went to Bordering on Nuts, a new team um, with board rider Andy from Pony Express, um, and that was a good time with them, 33.64. Uh, all the uh, teams, <laughs> all the teams were product placement back on show. We're looking at these new teams and definitely bordering on nuts, Fifty Shades of Bay's new team and EFL Horseboarding. All three of those teams could look very good in the elites uh, next year when they eventually qualify. So that was on novices. Uh, we'll just go into the intermediates. Me moving that, by the way, was our cameraman going, get it back in shot. So, okay, yeah. so looking for... <laughs> these George. eventual results we only had four teams in the intermediate category which was in fourth place chase me charlie with 68 for eight but i would say actually the boys because uh, it was actually ross towner and lloyd crab that were commentating on this and the boys were really enjoying uh, charlie's board riding um oh. and he was doing some really good stuff and they were pushing it they weren't hanging about they were properly racing um, they struggled a lot yesterday in the wet and not quite knowing where the course was but today in the dry uh, and he's a fighter he, he hung on to that that rope on quite a few occasions um where he could have let go so and that then in third place tom was in it to win it with 63.41 i have to say ld's board riding has yep. gone through the roof the team in general if I had to say, uh, their work, the way they're doing their lines, everything is really working for that team. And I know at Bowood, they've got a new horse, which we saw with the Hammers at um, Burley House. Yeah, they were talking about this, and I, we did some training with him a couple of weeks ago. And I think it's good that they moved from the Shetland now, because uh, Elodie's board riding is beyond... Um, the Shetland, she needs a bit more speed um, to really push herself and to test her board as well. So, but a good finish for them on uh, uh, in third place. I think if they'd had a, a bigger powerhouse of an engine, then they could have been a bit closer on second place, which was Pony Express with a 51.92 second uh, time. But taking first place and earning very needed points, this team have been dying to try and qualify up to the elite and it's probably not going to happen this year they've missed a couple of events but storming away with the intermediate round um, is top and tails with a time of 45.91 yeah top and tails looked every bit um elite really this weekend um i don't know we need to look at the actual uh, tables which um there are up on the um on the website and stuff but we to see exactly because i would have thought they'd be ready to qualify by now i thought that but we'll check the points at the end of the weekend so on to the big boys and this is where we've seen some epic racing happening i've been again i've been sat on the edge of my seat and i've been standing 
so uh, yeah absolutely brilliant set of racing 10 teams entered the elite this weekend here at Sandringham and as we all know Sandringham is our Indy 500 it is one of the fastest and largest courses we have so it often favours the race horses as can be shown or the ex race horses as can be shown in the championship table in 10th place um, we had Despicable Minions with a time of 106.74. In 9th place was Considerate Done with a time of 95.2. Yeah, in 8th place Halter Ego with a time of 92.48 and one of the longest crashes that we have ever seen in horseboarding. I don't it know must have it. been about 50 meters long. I have to say, I was I was stood right against the edge with the crowd and he was going on and I've never heard a crowd reaction like it. Everyone was like, come on Stu, stand up, stand up. And he went and the whole arena, which was easy, pushing a thousand people this afternoon. Um, which is good for a late heat like this in the, in the afternoon. Uh, the whole arena went, Ooh, yeah, it dropped. I mean, it was he he was on the he was basically on two wheels and a hand for an epic amount of time. I would say about fifty meters oh, and me. sliding yeah. around on the back, wasn't he? He was he was just all over the place and eventually fought back into the position before going over the front edge, as often happens from those from those sorts of uh, near crashes. Um, but uh, uh, unbelievable! It just went on for a forever that fall um, so um, a very good uh, very good demonstration there but in seventh place um, limited edition back this weekend after their wedding last weekend um, with a time of 88.70 they finished in seventh place I have to say Lloyd's board riding Absolutely brilliant, Where's Lloyd. He, Lloyd you know? looked really good. We've been saying, I've been, I've been saying all season he's going to pull it out of the bag soon, and I think this weekend was it. Yesterday in the wet, he was slipping and sliding around and dealing with it. Today they raced hard. Barkley Avenue just, it, it looked fast, but for some reason they just weren't quite far enough up the table. Their Except average time was eighty-eight point seven zero seconds. Except that one run when they'd have got sub eighty. Yeah. And. Lloyd hanging off to life. He came round the last corner on two wheels for the second half of it, fought it back, and then it just flipped him over the back, um, three and a half metres short of, of the, the finish, finish line. <laughs> Um, after racing the best part of half a mile so um, that's a real shame when that happens so then we're into sixth place drag act with 83.53 only really yeah they were really pushing only in sixth place What's by 0 .5, okay. 0 0.75 of a second and you know what they they raced hard this weekend I noticed that Matt changed his wheels today for the dry conditions so a wasp um, yeah, yeah, I know, Tom. Yes. Um, uh, so they raced hard this weekend. He changed his wheels. I think that might have affected the way the board was handling at some points. Um, but they, uh, you know, they just... Some of the corners were just too fast. And, and quite a few of the teams, actually, they were racing so close to the red line that quite a few of the teams found that they were just going too fast to make it around these corners Did in the way they wanted Ollie, to. Did you hear about Ollie Dartford's uh, comment yesterday? He actually no. said, while going around the arena, Nat, this is too fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was just, uh, you know, in, in unreal racing, but didn't end well. So, sixth place for Drag Act. In fifth place was Bruises Easily Limited, and this is the new combination of basically Bruises Easily, um, but it's a different new registered team. And then in fourth place, Sudden Impact with 81.65. In third place, we spoke about them just a second ago, is UK Border Force, who fought all weekend. They were in first place at the end of day one, and they have just fought it out and been taking lumps out of each other, these teams, yeah. um, to get to their finishing position. But finishing with a good um, finishing position in third place with a 79.97, and taking second place in the team championships, Ollie Dartford 
taking second place in the uh, first place in the border championships. Are you absolutely sure of that? Because that is not updating at the moment. That's not updating. Um, All right. But okay. Trust me when I say that this is correct. And this, this is, is the what same it as leads that. by one point. By one Ollie point Dartford in the is sat in front of Matt Channel Smith, which, who, this which is which is. Which has been very a very close competition call between the two and the two teams even. So, you know, who knows what will happen there. So going back, actually, Tom, to the uh, table in second place. They left it till the very end of the run. But in second place um, was the Dead Pigeons. They spent most of the weekend down further down the table than we well than we expect but we have seen them down there recently this year uh, but managed to pull it back pretty much on the last or second to last run uh, but then in first place once again and possibly next year's 2017 national champions chill winston chill winston beat the dead pigeons by 1.81 of a second um so really good racing for them i have to say this combination of team how would you beat them in a with a stick when they're sleeping? That's probably the way I can figure it out. They've come out in three rounds that they've been here, have dominated. Yeah, they and won. they are now now in fifth position in the championship and have four rounds of competition and only one point behind um, the uh, considerate Dunn team. So that's very very interesting there and could possibly then push consider it done into fifth position which i'm sure they'll um try to try to stop on the next round so man of the match i i want i want to talk about man of the match i've seen some epic boarding this weekend um i've got i've got three contenders when i'm talking thinking about it i've got sideways stew for that long long down as as we for were a, for about. a great fall yeah, um, I've got, I've got <laughs> Lloyd, falling off really well. I've got Mud, mate. It was epic. Um, I've got Lloyd Crab. He stepped up. I uh, saw some epic boarding from him this weekend. And then um, who won Man of the Match last time? Uh, Jack Bateman as well. I've never seen someone come around a corner like that. The board in the complete wrong angle and just jump it square. I mean, I would say the board riding from Jack was uh, exceptional and was you know some of the things he was doing he was reading the way the board's going into the corner and and like really digging into the board dropping down twisting it and then standing back up again to make it go straight so really good but uh, you know he did get man of the match last time um we've seen a great improvement from lloyd would say it's come together uh so i'm gonna leave it up to you on this occasion um because well, i, I would think say the round eight equally, well I, you're right i liked Stu's. uh crash um, mm -hmm. but maybe that goes down to best crash of the year um, that's what I think it'll with. definitely be in the ter be in the, the um, in the category yes yeah um, but for most improvement someone that went out and uh, started and struggled a little bit this year mm -hmm. um, but they're bored in this weekend has come out and smashed it and Lloyd Crab round eight Horse Boarding UK, man of the match. Yeah, no, oh, I would, uh, <laughs> the and I would, um, I would say, you know, you know, the boarding, particularly on day one, was really good. The way the board was snaking around and he was sorting it out. He was brave um, for wearing a white shirt, I thought, in many yeah, conditions. Yeah, yeah, and still managed to turn up this morning with a clean top. So I'm not sure quite how he did that. Obviously, more than one. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's everything from round eight of the National Horse Boarding Championships. It's now all down to the final, and it really is down to the final just looking at the championship tables if we just pull that down um, just looking at the championship tables dead pigeons go into the final on 68 points UK border force go into the final on 60 points so they UK border force could have been closer to them it could have been a bit more dangerous but of but course just behind UK pigeons, border force yeah but dead pigeons have to turn up and they have to race but if there's only eight teams in the elite which we think there might only be eight teams in the elite as long as they turn up and get a point they can win so they just need to not get ninth yeah. basically uh, and UK border force have to also win if that is going to come about it's mathematically possible. mathematically possible but a little un not saying unlikely for UK border force to win but for that combination to happen is unlikely in third place is drag act with 59 points so whatever happens UK border force and drag act could find themselves on a exact draw um, or we could see the table change in either direction should we just uh, run through it now while we're here and then uh, we'll finish off the table. Um, so then in fourth place is Consider It Done with 40 points. 
And then fifth place is Chill Winston with 39 points. Chill Winston having three victories and one second place. And Consider It Done still holding on to fourth place with their fingernails. But we'll have to just see what happens at the next event. In sixth place is Mad Atters. In seventh. With 30 points, yep. And then, yeah, seventh, pl seventh place is Sudden Impact, who have 29 points along with Pocket Rocket. So whoever wins out of that combination, if Pocket Rocket are there, um, again, takes that position on that, that event. Yeah. And then uh, we've got a limited edition in... 10th place with 13 points, points but we need to but check we will that. check all this but, yeah uh, yeah so ladies and gentlemen this has been round eight at the national horse boarding championships with horse boarding uk and um, we'll be in bowwood in two weeks time uh, with living heritage game and country fair come and see the penultimate round of the horse boarding uk national championships winning winning <laughs>